our previous video, Recording Bass Guitar Part 3, we introduced DI boxes and time aligning of audio tracks. In this fourth video, we will demonstrate blending multiple microphones and DIs and introduce a technique called reamping. We are going to blend a Sennheiser E604 with the Audix D6 microphone from Recording Bass Guitar Part 2. The E604 is a cardioid dynamic mic designed for snare drums and rack toms. With this mic, we were looking for the best mid-range sound, and we found it at 3 inches. Let's combine it with the rich low end of the Audix D6. We have time-aligned these tracks as demonstrated in Recording Bass Guitar Part 3. Let's hear each mic on its own, and then two different blends. And now let's throw the time aligned DI back into the mix and hear yet another blend. These blending and time aligning techniques all help in the search for the right tone for a given project. But what if, in the middle of your project, you decide that you want a different sound altogether, perhaps even using a different amp? Reamping is the process of sending a previously recorded track into an amplifier so that the miking process can start all over again. We are going to send one of our DI tracks into this vintage 1965 Ampeg B15 Portaflex amplifier. We are using the DI track because it is the most neutral sounding track we have thus offering the most tonal flexibility. In order to do this, you can use any number of devices specifically designed for this task. Here is a diagram demonstrating how to connect one such device. The previously recorded bass track is taken from your recording device and connected to the Radial Pro RMP reamping box using a standard XLR cable. The quarter-inch Pro RMP output is connected to your amplifier using a standard instrument cable. The Pro RMP has an output level control to avoid overdriving the amp input. We have set up three microphones in front of the amp, the Audix D6, the Sennheiser E604, and the EV RE320. Now we can experiment with even more tonal combinations, even distorting the amplifier. Here are a few of the sounds we got by adjusting the amplifier controls and blending the microphones and the original DI track in different combinations. All the tracks have been time aligned as we demonstrated in Recording Bass Guitar Part 3. We've learned a lot by trying all these different techniques. We hope you have too. Mm -hmm.